The portfolio is everything. If you're an artist who's looking for work, it is what gets you hired. More than a degree or where you went to school, it's more than a resume. Your portfolio is your ticket to your dream job. So your portfolio is your most important asset. It's the reason why a traditional degree doesn't even matter anymore. And it's standing in between you and your dreams. What can we do about it? Where do you even start? Those are the questions that I want to answer in today's video. I wanted to make this video to share some tips and advice on actually building your portfolio, mostly for game artists. But if you're just someone that's an artist looking to build a portfolio, these are generally going to apply, but all my experience does come from game art. So I want to share some things that I think worked for me and in mentoring and helping other people, we can get in our own way. We can overthink this stuff. We can end up getting stuck at choosing what we're going to do and how, what does it all mean? So I just want to take a short amount of time to give an overview and then a basic general strategy that I think is gonna help you build a stronger portfolio in a shorter amount of time in a way that avoids overthinking things and just lets you make the stuff you wanna make. Portfolios are extremely personal business, okay? There's no one right way to do anything. What I'm about to say is not the end all be all. It can take years to build a strong portfolio and everyone's got different goals and different tastes and everything, okay? So all that being said, this isn't gospel but this is a simple and effective strategy and some tips that have worked for me, worked for other people. So we'll jump in there and we'll share some stuff that maybe can help you on your journey. So now let's jump in now by starting at the start, starting a portfolio. That would be the first key thing to do when building a portfolio. First, I want to say when you're building a portfolio for a dream job, be specific, be as specific as you can with not just the job, but like what are you gonna be spending most of your time doing? As specific as you can be to what you really wanna do is gonna help you in curating a portfolio that can help lead to that. An exercise that I find pretty useful when speaking to students is just pick a job that happened in the past, you know, like we're all motivated by some like, you know, inspirations and things that really got us excited or feeling strong. Maybe you loved the last of us two game or something. You're like, I would have loved to work on last of us two, right. Or red dead redemption or uh, destiny or something like something that really gets your stove cooking really gets you going. So pick that job and then make a portfolio for that, at least several posts for that, you know, and then you can do some homework, like look at what they're, maybe doing coming up because we're gonna have a tip down the line here that applies to this but you want to be specific to that because that helps you like what is it kind of sci-fi you know what kind of sci-fi it is it what kind of modeling and texturing is it it can really narrow in some of the limitless things that you could be doing so it can help you drill down in on style on technique on tone that kind of stuff so yeah if you do have a dream job or two that are closely related think about building your portfolio in a way that really focuses on that when you're gonna start I think it's important to separate this idea of your portfolio is not just all of your work that's not what it is a portfolio is your strongest examples of work that's meant to lead to a job Okay, so if we're in the early stages of just doing art for fun, practicing, learning the trade, everything doesn't have to be a portfolio piece. So I think one thing you can do is making the decision, is this a study, is this a practice, or is this a portfolio piece? So making that distinction right up the front might help you make different decisions, but also know that you can always start something for fun and turn it into a portfolio piece. But the main key here is it's quality, over quantity. Second piece of advice here on starting is to choose a concept that's clearly defined. I don't want you to design your characters unless you're a character designer, unless that's your portfolio. Obviously it should all be that then, but if you are an artist of another craft, in this case, making game art or doing VFX or something like that. Like if your imaginary job, dream job that you want is you receive concept art and then you are meant to make it and pass it along. If that is part of the dream job, then start choosing awesome concepts because it's not your job to design a character. And to be frank, you're not going to do it as good as someone who that's their sole focus and occupation, right? It's all around better to start. And then we want one that's clear. Sometimes we can choose concepts that are a little bit impressionistic because it looks awesome and we think we'll figure it out later. But trust me, 
try to make it clear. A lot of concepts don't have a back view. There's your problem that you can figure out. A, you can just show the character from the front view. You choose what they see. And then B, you know, you might just be able to make it up from the front. And then more on selecting a concept. It's really, really, really important that you choose subject matter and concepts of things that you like, that you're passionate about. Hopefully that seems silly that I'm saying it, but it probably won't seem silly to everyone. A lot of conversations that I'll get into with up and coming uh, people or people that ask for my advice. Man, a lot of the times I just see that they're twisting themselves up into trying to fit into a hole that's not their shape. You know what I'm saying? Like another way of saying this is don't go choose a concept that you think you're supposed to make. And now this is important for two really important reasons here. You could just make stuff you don't wanna make your whole life, but that, isn't that the whole point of being an artist is to not have a job where your whole job is to do things you don't wanna do? So. Two things, one, building a portfolio made up of work that you wanted to do, that you are interested in, it sends out a signal. It makes, it, it's part of that brand now. When someone comes across it, either an individual or a business, it's like you're saying something, you're selling something, okay? So you're much more likely to get jobs that align with your personal interests. So that should be enough reason right there to make a portfolio full of stuff that you like doing because that's what you're gonna get hired to do. The second reason is if you, are selecting stuff that you want to do, you're way, way, way more likely to get to the end of the project. That's the biggest thing that people fail to do is to finish their projects. So if you're selecting something that you're not even that passionate about because you think you're supposed to do it, you know, you're gonna get a couple weeks in there and you're gonna bail. And then that's not doing anyone any good. So always choose concepts that you're passionate about. Now I've been collecting concepts for characters that I really like for years now. I have a public Pinterest that you can check out if you want to. Nowadays, this is full of stuff, but I've got way too many things that I would like to do. So now this is full of things for all different kinds of reasons, but you have some things that are pretty clear designs. You have completely original designs that are not a part of an IP, but like an artist did. So this is just my own collection. You can find a million out there. There are other places you might have a collection of your own, but this is why I encourage people to do is, is to start, have a place where you can save these because if you start doing some of the things we're talking about here, you're gonna have an, a limitless amount of ideas for things to add and things to do. And that's where you wanna be, where you're so clear on the things you wanna make that there's too many things to make. That's where you wanna be. You don't wanna be stuck at the starting line. Okay, the next key is building. In the actual building of your portfolio, let's talk about a few things here. What do you put in a portfolio? Well, obviously it depends on your specific goal that you want to get to, right? Your specific role. So it'd be different for everybody. We're talking about game art, and then really for me, that'd be character art. So let's talk about, if you wanna be a character artist for games, what are you putting in your portfolio? Real-time characters. What's important is that they're full characters, they're reasonable amount of topology, because they're real-time. This is for real-time rendering which means we have budgets, we can't go crazy. Hair cards, you want a demonstration of that. And you want to demonstrate using the tools. So Maya, still the most widely used DCC modeling tool. ZBrush, used by every character artist in any field ever. Substance Painter for texturing real-time models. And then if you rendered it, you could do Marmoset Toolbag, which is real-time, or you can do Unreal, which is the industry's most popular game engine. So you wanna show the thing that you'd be doing on the job that you made using the tools that you'd be using on the job most likely. And you wanna showcase skills. There's obviously taste, aesthetic, all that stuff that we want to do to make our portfolio stand out and get people's attention. So that's what you want when you're building a portfolio for character arts or games. Now, that's what you wanna build your portfolio with, but you don't just have to build your portfolio with that. This brings me to my, what I'm calling the pillar and brick method which I spoke about in my other portfolio video. This is just a simple strategy that I've been doing for a long time that I just preach to everybody because it's a way to make more art in a shorter amount of time and you get all the benefits, right? And you don't have to be so rigid. It's actually more fun. Now a pillar is probably what you think it would be. It's a full on game character, right? So if I chose one of these. So my own portfolio, this is a professional character, but here, here's a full character, right? We got hair, costume, legs, you know, front and back, the whole thing, it's in a pose and the whole shebang. Here's another one, full character. Okay, so what I just described would be a pillar, right? If we think of our portfolio made of bricks and pillars, the pillars are what hold up the portfolio. Those are your crown jewels. And that's where you're doing everything I mentioned. You're showing like, hey, this is the kind of thing I'd be making for the job you want. Check this out. Hey, I'm using the tools that you guys use. See, I can do that. I got a male, I got a female, I got a sci-fi, I got a fantasy. You know, once you have like three or four, you're good. 
So rather than just make full on game characters for free for the rest of your life or until you get a job, to me, what makes the most sense, you get the most bang for your buck and it's more enjoyable is after you make one of these big honking pillar things for your portfolio, which can take a lot of time and effort, then you do a couple smaller projects. So that's what a brick is. A brick is a smaller scoped project and it's just not as regimented. It's not, it, you don't have to check all the boxes. Just check some boxes. The most important thing you want with these like brick posts is to say something about your art or your personal taste or something. These are the ones that you wanna be attention grabbing. You don't have the same limitations. Maybe it's something you care about in pop culture, like a fan art thing that has like a twist, or maybe it's like a really dynamic pose or facial expression or something that's heavily stylized or using like some software, hair grooming techniques, things that you haven't tried yet, right? That you wanna experiment with. You're showing a little bit of tone and like personality with yourself or your taste or whatever. So you can really help build out a portfolio with these kind of brick posts. So. So the whole idea though is that this brick part of your portfolio, it's not like a sketch, it's not a study. You know, it's not something you just throw on social media and it goes away. It is something that is portfolio worthy, but it's not that same standard. Now, if you did two or three of these in between your pillars, then a couple things happen. One is you're getting more portfolio posts in a short amount of time, that's good. But then also, if you do take time to do like two or three smaller scope projects in between, then your next big portfolio project, your next pillar, your next full character will have the added experience that you got from starting and finishing three other projects. They're obviously probably gonna be different from each other. You have new problems to solve. You're getting more comfortable, boom. That second one now is stronger than it was if it had come right after the first one. So you're increasing your skill and your experience in a shorter amount of time. You're getting more portfolio posts in a shorter amount of time. And I think you're upping the attention grabbing factor because that's the whole point with these you know bricks um it's hard to make a full-on character that's exciting every time but you just need a couple of those to show that you can have them that you can do them and once you've proven that then you can have some fun and you can show some other things i'll show you in my own portfolio how i've done a ton i mean my portfolio now is mostly bricks to be honest with you so here's another one Here's an example, right? This is not a full character. You might even be able to see what it is, but I mean, it, it's cut off. Like there's no hands, the back, I'm not doing anything. This is rendered in Arnold. So this isn't even a game pipeline, but it's a 3D character. It's posed and stuff. There's lighting, there's hair and grooming and stuff. So it is showing character art. It's, uh, you know, it's a reimagining of this character. So anyways, it's showing some stuff. It's also kind of a nerd card. You know what I mean? Like if I ever run into anyone that knows this about this then we can geek out for a little bit so that's pretty cool too that's an example of not a not a game character here's one where it's in unreal so we're getting there it's kind of animated but this hair is groom hair and there's some weird niagara stuff to make this do all this this is kind of a mid poly thing you know this is quickly rigged and everything so again this cannot go in a game it's kind of adjacent but if i was in an interview with someone that hey i've i've used a little bit of niagara i've used unreal rendering so this is not game art but if I was in an interview with somebody, this is in my portfolio and we're going through stuff, we talk about things, we go, oh yeah, this is this, there's some backstory, and then, hey, I'm using Unreal. You know, I'm importing an SKM, which normally character artists aren't doing at lower levels, right? So like, I'm understanding a little bit of the process, some skinning, and hey, I'm using Niagara, which is a new UE5 thing. I rendered this in UE5 when it was new, that kind of thing. I set up this shot in Unreal, and this is a Niagara particle. And this is a Niagara particle. So, you know, I'm making images, art fundamentals. Here's another one where this one obviously was big for me. No lower half, right? So this is still took me less time than a game character for sure. But, you know, it is full groom. It's in Unreal. And this is actually the, the deferred renderer. This is not path tracing. So I felt pretty good about that. But, um, you know, the frame rate would be garbage with the uh, hair. But anyways, pretty cool. I can make this video really fast because it's just Unreal. So yeah, this was cool. A lot of overlap, but not a game character. So that's what I mean. Okay, the next tip is the quality of what you make should be high, probably higher than you think. The simple way to think about this is, I mean, really you got you got two ways it could go. If you just, boom, put a character, we're gonna talk about character art, just game art, right? If you just put a really cool example of game art that was in a game today, that right now is like 10 out of 10 IGN game of the year graphics or whatever, right? And you put that in your portfolio right now, people looking to hire you, it's not that exciting because that thing was made like two or three years ago, because that's how it works. So people are making the games right now that are gonna come out in three years. And then when those come out, people are like, wow, the graphics are amazing, right? So like in the industry, we're, we're a couple years ahead. And then when you post something on your portfolio, you want it to be good for a couple years, right? So 
that means theoretically we're talking four or five years in the future. So at that point, who knows what it's going to be. So anyways, all that to say, make it pretty high poly. Just make it look good. The most important thing is that you're using the software and that you're using the general workflow. You know, that you're someone that's demonstrating, I can make awesome art that looks cool with the tools you guys use. All we gotta do is I gotta point me towards the right game, coach, you know? So really what we wanna make is futuristic content. Some of the examples that I'll show in my portfolio, you know, I've got like fiber groom-based hair that may not ever come to mainstream games, but that's something that's really futuristic, but definitely high poly characters, path trace rendering, you know, rendering with all the material stuff turned on or at a super high resolution. That's the kind of stuff we're talking about. So you're not gonna, you don't wanna hamstring yourself. What you don't wanna do is make a VFX character with VFX workflows and techniques and put it in a game art portfolio. That's not what we're doing. We're not saying like, oh, here's also an offline renderer and it's displacement map and I used, you know, Arnold or V-Ray or something. That's like apples and tomatoes. That's not what we wanna do. But what we wanna do is make something that is like extremely high quality, even if you're someone who's shooting for you know, maybe your dream job is like Fortnite or something. What would the imaginary Fortnite 2 be, you know, or something? If it came with a graphics upgrade, right? Because also you want people's attention to be grabbed. And so you want that newness and you want to show the detail oriented problem solving stuff. It's something that didn't exist. And you really want to like make something that pops, make it high quality, probably a little bit higher than, than you thought. Okay. Now let's talk about the last kind of phase here, the sharing the sharing of your portfolio, the sharing of your work. Community, obviously huge. The internet and everything makes things very different than when I was doing things, but this is how it is right now for me and at least with my community. First and foremost, the place that you're posting public portfolios nowadays in the video game art world and, and the entertainment art world is artstation.com. That's where you're gonna post stuff. You're gonna have your own website, that's good, but Artstation just has discoverability. So even if you have your own site, you should also post it here because recruiters just peruse Artstation. I get cold messages people do that you can mark that you're looking for work so in terms of like public portfolios our station is number one for the entertainment world and a couple notes on the actual sharing of your work i can make a whole thing about this so i'm gonna try to do this as short as possible but pose your character we are making characters to hopefully bring them to life now a lot of times it doesn't happen especially in a portfolio because you're missing the whole other people that would be doing that right so can we do that ourselves a little bit let's try because you can see once i decided to just always pose my characters it's just a big difference like it looks like they're alive and they're doing stuff we come down here. I mean, look at this, dude. Come on, this is boring. Stop this. So just don't be taking straight on shots, deadpan shots, shots that look weird. A lot of character artists, it's sad now because I see them just do awesome work for hundreds of hours. And then right before the end, they, you know, they post it. And it's like, ah, if you just pose it a little bit and had an expression or some emotion and, and had a scene in there, the emotional impact that it makes on the viewer, huge. The amount of work relative to the project versus the impact is huge. So just never not posed is my tip in general for all you character art peeps. And for your just game art peeps and doing props and stuff, just make it sexy, that's all I'm saying. Just make it, just think about the impact. Some showmanship goes a long way in your portfolio. In terms of places to share, ArtStation, Instagram, and Discord. ArtStation, still the number one online portfolio website. Nothing comes close. If you have anything personal or you send other places, go ahead and do that. But always post on ArtStation because it has that discoverability for people looking to hire people like you. Second is Instagram. Not the greatest, most professional place to get like offers. I have gotten some jobs there, but the number one thing is just to share your art to help you know your brand online as someone who makes art. And also I've had it lead to conversations. Like if you discover someone and shoot them a DM, sometimes they write back. Sometimes someone writes you a message and you get to like meet other artists and talk that way and get off the platform and chat and all that stuff. So Instagram has been like the main social media for art and portfolio stuff, which makes sense because it's about images. Lastly is Discord. Discord is the new community thing, right? When I was uh, back in my day, it was forums and now it's a million communities. I have one, we have one. The link's down below, you can join there. Mostly character art related. You know, people are posting their work, they're posting their links to their art station. Really awesome, high quality stuff going on in there. And then there's people floating around to help answer your questions and you can ask, you can get feedback, yada, yada, check it out. 
be cool or don't be cool and don't go there. And then if you are about to make your next character art project for your portfolio, I literally am making a class on that and you can go to characterclass.com. Check out some details there and if you want, you can sign up and we can do that together and we can crush it. And then lastly, if you're into this sort of thing, talking about portfolios and all that, I did make a video sharing my own first portfolio and my story of how that led to my job, which you can check a look right here. Other than that, I'll see you in the next video. Peace out.